It's April 6th, 2020. I'm Drutter, and today is the 22nd day of my coronavirus lockdown diary. I've been recording my experiences along with some data analysis and opinions on what's going on in the world for the past 22 days. Not every day, but most days. And today I wanted to talk about a few things from around the world that I noticed in headlines and such, and a few things also closer to home, and also some things here, right here in my life. And hopefully I won't go over 20 minutes this time. Uh, so as far as deaths, it does seem to be coming down slightly. It was only the fourth worst day for deaths today. 75,000 now in total. And Italy and Spain do seem to have peaked, which is excellent news. So their strict social isolation is blunting that curve anyway. It hasn't really brought it down too much, but it is not, it's not accelerating anymore. And the numbers are coming down. And that's great. So hopefully it will drop more rapidly soon. As, uh, it's been a little bit longer since they went into quarantine. I think it's been almost a month or so now in Italy. So they're seeing some major um, positive outcomes from that finally and some relief on their healthcare system. In France they're still coming up but it seems to be peaking somewhere around the peak now in France. Hard to tell with Germany because they count their numbers very differently there. Um, here in Canada we have 340 confirmed deaths. That number continues to curve up exponentially, but we are earlier on the curve than most of those other places mentioned earlier, well, all of those other places mentioned earlier, and we're even earlier than the U.S., which actually tends to be one of the worst uh, worst places in the world for deaths every day. They're losing about 1,000 to 1,200 people, I think, daily now in the U.S., so um, hopefully that number will peak, but it is moving uh, I think across the U.S. into different major areas and major cities. So New York obviously being one of the main hotspots right now, but if that continues to spread to different parts of the U.S., then we will see a continuation of cases and unfortunately deaths that follow along with those cases. And in a lot of places, even here in Canada, they're saying it's getting harder to count all the cases and even all the deaths. For example, a lot of deaths are going uncounted because people are dying now at home, and especially in Ontario, they're dying at home, and in the U.S., in New York, for example, dying at home in large numbers, and they used to go out and test those bodies after they died to see if, you know, just to get the numbers and see if that was the virus or not, but they're unable to do that now, so a lot of those ones that are dying in hospitals are just going uncounted, unfortunately, so these numbers are maybe on the low side. Some people say they're on the high side. It's hard to really tell. There's, they're probably not exact numbers, but when you look at them all together, when you look at all different sources that are counting these things and anecdotes from family members and everything, all these numbers being counted and collated together, you can get a picture of what's going on. And uh, the numbers are still on the rise in a lot of places still, including here in the U.S. and Canada. In B.C. there are 39 dead now. Uh, unfortunately, including a man today in his 40s who died at home, who was otherwise healthy, so that hits close to home, no pun intended there. That's um, that's my age range, and yeah, so it is it is hitting uh, people in their youth, or not necessarily in their youth, I guess, but you could say people who aren't uh, elderly anyway, people who are in their 40s, people who are in their 50s, people who are in their 30s, and even some people who are in their 20s are dying from this, so... Um, we can't we can't just say it's the, just the elderly that are dying anymore. It's not that's not the case. It's a numbers game. The elderly are more likely to die, but as more cases are seen, more people are sick. Then, unfortunately, more young people are dying now. And there are 140 people in BC in hospital fighting for their lives right now. Good luck to them and their families. And some news here in um, Canada: the provinces are now limiting travel within the provinces. For example, you can't get on trains or buses or anything like that if you have a temperature or other symptoms. And um, they're also now de facto closing borders between provinces. Most provinces now aren't accepting any travel from other provinces. So uh, essentially you cannot move around in Canada. That is a constitutional right of ours is to move around Canada within provinces as we choose to um, seek livelihood or to live with family members or whatever we choose to do, we're allowed to travel within Canada. Um, so that has been taken away. So these are 
you know, we have to keep on listing these things, these rights that are being taken away and changed, so that they can be brought back and restored afterward, because that's supposedly what's going to happen and what needs to happen. Here in BC, the food banks are very, very close to empty. Um, sources of food and nutrition for a lot of people, unfortunately, these days, especially now in the past few weeks as everyone is losing their jobs. <laughs> Not everyone, of course, but a lot of people are losing their jobs right now. And the mainstream media is now reporting that grocery costs are going up. And so that's something that I've been talking about for a while, food inflation. It has begun, they're saying, and I think that has already been noticed by a lot of people. A lot of things I'm buying are now 20, 30, 40, even 50 percent higher than they were before. Some staples still hanging on there, but a lot of those are sold out when you go to get them. So it's getting tougher and tougher to get things at those low prices anymore. And I noticed that the media is blaming the you know panicked buyers and uh, for this increased demand. They're saying there's increased demand because of panicked buyers. That's what gro that's why grocery costs are going up. It's you panicked buyers. But meanwhile, they're stoking everyone's fear. And like I've said before, we're like chipmunks, right? We're like squirrels. When we get scared or when we sense winter coming or something, we stock up. We, st we put away some nuts. And that's what I've been doing and a lot of people have been doing. Not a lot, but you know, if you have a few weeks on hand to a month or even six weeks, that's pretty smart. Um, because there can be major disruptions in service, as we've seen in the past with major storms or um, other events can happen. So the media is stoking people's fear nonstop and then shaming people when they go about their business and go and try and buy some food and bring it home. It's you panicked buyers, you're buying too much. Well, you know, that's only half the equation. They're not even talking about the other half, which is supply. No mention of the collapsing supply. There's much fewer people working right now, so there's fewer products being created. That's just how it works. And, you know, the farmers are, for the most part, still out there working in their fields, I'm sure, but that's not the only uh, part of the equation. We're not all just eating, you know, rice directly out of the field or whatever. It's a lot of the stuff we eat is processed from that state. And there are employees working in, you know, processing plants food packing plants, etc., that have to work in close proximity. And a lot of these have been shut down or are changing operations drastically right now. And everything's all up in the air. And I think that's part of the equation that the media doesn't mention. They don't mention that there's less actual food coming. That's scary to say to people. They don't want to say that. They want to just say, oh, it's you, you're buying too much. Stop buying so much. Don't buy food. <laughs> I don't think people are eating more. So at some point, this food that people are, are storing away is just going to be thrown out or eaten or whatever, but they're they're gonna eventually they're gonna stop panic buying. People can't don't panic buy until it's just being thrown in the garbage. So at some point that panic buying can't be blamed anymore. And I don't think that's really what's going on anymore. I think there's actually food shortages that they're just not actually saying quite that way. But they're saying they're admitting food inflation has begun and I've been reporting on that for a while. So Another thing they're blaming is the plexiglass. They're saying, well, there's plexiglass going up around these cashiers. We're separating the public from the cashiers by plexiglass. So they can't re talk very well or, or hear each other very well or pass cash back and forth, for example. But you know, we've got to put up the plexiglass, and that's very expensive, they're saying. I don't think that's, you know, that's a one-time cost, and stores always are having to upgrade and to put in safety measures and all these kinds of things. You can't know. That's... That's not to blame for food inflation in Canada right now and around the world, no. So what's really going on is demand is up, yes, and that's natural, but what's really going on is supply is down, and that's the other half of the equation they're not talking about. And along those lines, gold today in Canada hit another all-time high of 2360 Canadian, or 23, somewhere in there, 2350 and, and higher. And that's tied with last week's all-time high. And we've just been coming up and up and up since I've been following gold when it was well under $1,000 Canadian. Um, and I remember when I was younger and it was back in the... It was not, not even that long ago. It was in the early 2000s. Gold was, what was it, $400 Canadian? $500 or so? And it's just been creeping up. And now here we are at almost $2,400 Canadian. 
and that is not the end of the story either. This is inflation, and what's coming soon is hyperinflation. So these numbers aren't going to matter anymore. These numbers on the end, it's just going to matter how many thousands you're talking. Is it 2,000, 3,000, 4,000, 5,000, 10,000, etc.? in terms of dollars. So that's what's coming soon. That's what's going on with food. It's There's inflation. There's too many dollars being printed. That's the other side of the other side of the equation. There's too many dollars now being created. And yeah, people are scared. Demand is up for food. And supply is down for food. But supply of dollars is up. That's the other other side of the equation. So now we see why food is going up and getting scarce. Canada has reversed its recommendation. Now masks apparently do prevent transmission of the virus. So <laughs> after saying no, 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 don't wear masks, don't wear masks, specifically don't wear masks, they've been saying. Now they're saying masks prevent transmission. So actually, wait a second, have you been giving people the opposite of the correct advice this entire time and spreading this infection through Canada and the United States? Is that, is that really what I'm noticing here? Anyway, I guess I shouldn't notice it too much. Um, yeah, I think what's going to happen with that is they're now going to become mandatory in stores and then probably just in public whenever you're, out, you know, whenever you're not in your own home. It's basically going to be you must be hijabed. You must have your face covered from public, from the... What? It used to be that you weren't allowed to wear a mask if you, you know, walk into a bank with your face covered unless you were a specific religion and sex. That was that was absolutely a no-no. That was an instantly you're a terrorist, but now everyone's going to have to wear a mask and cover their face. It's such a strange, strange reversal. It's such a strange thing. And this is social engineering at its best. This is what's going on here is we're being molded and changed because we're scared right now, right? As a society, we're scared. And that makes people as a whole moldable. We're, we're, we're being taken advantage of right now. So, you know, they're saying homemade cloth masks are fine. You don't need to use the real ones, the, the you know, the, the certified ones. Those are for government. Those are for the hospitals to use and such. But you just need to cover your faces. You need to get something, just get something wrapped around your face. Cover your face. Stop. You dirty people. Cover your faces when you are outside, I guess. That's what's coming. And lastly, I want to talk about YouTube, Facebook, Twitter, and more are now removing any videos or comments linking this transmission, this illness, to 5G technology. They say it's conspiracy theory fake news. So it's lumped in now with things like 9-11, it was an inside job, uh, cannabis cures cancer, and uh, critiquing a certain sect of a certain religious group that I am not even allowed to name here, otherwise the bad stuff will happen. So, talking about this illness being linked to 5G technology is now along the lines with a whole bunch of other things that are censored that I think are true. So, take that for what you will. I don't even know. This video is only ever seen by about 80 people, these videos. I have supposedly 10,000 almost subscribers on this channel and have been doing videos for 12 years and I have multiple platforms on the go, but supposedly only a few people watch these videos. If you are one of those few, thanks for watching, thanks for commenting, and talk to you tomorrow for day 23. Stay healthy.